What is up everybody, my name is Tyler Potts, it's 2020 and it's it's the first day of our 31 days, 31 videos. In this video we're going to be working on this clock UI as it is the first day, it's the first day of the new year. We're going to be working on a clock UI to help us count down to the next year, which is 365 days away. That's a long while, but... We're gonna we're gonna make this anyway. So this is the UI we're gonna make it's done with JavaScript, CSS, and HTML as usual. So let's get started. Okay, guys. So we start by creating a new pen, and the first thing we'll do is the markup really quickly. So in here, we're just gonna give it a um, a wrap with a clock element inside inside the clock element we're gonna have the clock inner and inside that we're gonna have a few things so we're gonna have the clock centerpiece we're gonna have the we're gonna have three hands we're gonna say hand times three and each hand the first one is gonna be the second hand it's gonna be the minute hand and the final one is going to be the hour hand. So we've got the three hands and this is all the markup we need. So let's save this. It's going to show nothing over there. Let's open up our CSS, which is actually using SAS. Um, and let's uh, start on that one. So first things first, we're going to quickly give this a singular. We'll give this a margin. Um, give it some padding of zero. Make sure everything has all that set. We'll give it box sizing of border box and these are just resets we'll be doing the actual styling for the clock um, in a minute so we're going to give this a min height of 100 vertical height um, we're going to give this a background image and I have a gradient right here let me just paste this in and there you go so it's a nice little pink gradient so we're going to stick with that now let's style the wrap so the wrap is just what we're using to contain everything so we'll give this um, basically all the things we need we'll give it a flex we're going to actually center all the content because it's best to center it and obviously center it vertically as well for line center we're going to give the clock a position of relative because we're going to have um, so we're going to have uh, absolute positioned elements inside of that so we need that we're going to give it a max width of 400 pixels with a width of 100 percent so it stretches out until it hits 400 pixels if it goes below it will shrink um, and then we're going to give it a transform with the scale of minus one now let me explain it so the transform here the reason we're, we're flipping the whole clock is because with the javascript we're writing we're actually going to be writing it backwards and the clock would either be running backwards or backwards and incorrectly or it would be flipped the wrong way around and it would say it's 10 o'clock when it's actually two o'clock if that makes sense so that's why we're flipping it in the css to make it look like it's the right way around and that is kind of how it's going to work um, we also now to give this height we're just going to quickly say and after we're going to give this content of nothing we're going to give this a display of block and then we're going to give this padding top of 100% now that's going to make it square so if I go here and I say background color FFF and hit save you'll see we now have a really 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 tall block and we're going to fix that but yeah so this is what we've got so far it's taken up the whole screen but that is because we did align content and not align items so now it's now a perfect square in the center 400 by 400 this and after technique i've taught in a video before check it out if you want to have a look at other ways to do that um we're going to say clock inner we're going to give this a position of absolute uh, top zero left zero right zero and bottom zero We'll give it a C index of one just to make sure it stays at the top. We'll give it a border radius of 50% because we want it to be perfectly circular. And then we're going to give it a border of five pixels solid and white. Now we're going to get rid of the background color on the actual clock element because we just want to see this circular element here. So that is the start of our clock. Let's actually, inside this we'll say clock center we're also going to give a position of absolute so there's the small dot in the center of the clock 
and what we want to say is top 50 percent we want to move it to the center we want to say left 50 percent we don't want to give it a width of 12 pixels and a height of the same with a border radius of 50 percent to make it round a transform trans late of minus 50 percent minus 50 percent so we cancel out the uh extra because obviously the origin is on the top left and then we're just going to say background color fff hit save and there you go we've got the dot in the center of the screen let's actually widen this because i feel like we don't need that much space um, and actually let's zoom in a little there we go that's probably better sorry if you it was hard to see before maybe two there you go so we've got the clock center and now let's do the hands so we're just going to say hand and this is going to have a position oh, where are we here we go give this position of absolute two absolute two uh, we'll go here from all top of 50% and left of 50% we'll display it as block uh, we're going to give it a width and we use the calc method we'll give it 50% minus 20 pixels just average we're then going to set the height to be six pixels each with a background color of white and a transform origin of left center because we want it to be centered and then a border radius of 999 pixels so the edges are perfectly round and there you go so now it's now sitting that way um although it's actually slightly off as you can see it's sitting that but we'll fix that in one second so we're now going to say we're going to get the second hand first and the second hand is going to have an opacity of 0 0.5 you probably won't be able to see it yet. It's going to have a height of three pixels, so it's going to be slightly thinner. Um, we're actually going to do a transform translate y of minus 50% uh, to follow what we're doing up here. Oh, sorry. So this is going to be there. And then we're going to give this a rotate. So actually, it's minus 50% could go in any but we're just going to give them default row 10 of minus 180 degrees there you go so as you can see it's perfectly centered over to the right we're actually going to take this transform there and also apply that there because that means it would center them all perfectly so now it doesn't look off centered so that's the second hand we're also going to give this a transition of 0 0.1 seconds and then we're just going to say ease out now let's get the minute hand the minute hand is basically just going to be a similar thing to up here we're just going to say transform translate y again needs to be minus 50 percent but this time we're going to give this a rotation starting at nine minus 90 degrees just going to put it straight down which is good and let's get the hour oh and let's give this a transition as well let's copy this it's going to be 0 0.4 this one just because obviously the minute hand takes a lot longer to get there and then the hour we're just going to say transition no transform sorry translate y as we did before again minus 50 percent We'll give it a rotate of minus 90 degrees. Is it minus 90 degrees? Sorry, it's 45 degrees. Any degrees, just so it's not the same as what the FSR. And this will be changing dynamically anyway, so you can do the, the starting transformation of whatever you want. So we'll give this, so we're going to make the hour hand smaller so we can tell which one is the hour hand. And then we're going to give this enough 0.4 ease out. There you go. So that's all we need. So all we've done is styled this up. This doesn't actually do any functionality yet whatsoever. We're actually going to move on to the JS now. So this is the final part we need. Um, and it's actually not that difficult to make this thing tick. Although clocks in real life are very difficult to make tick. And if anyone knows how to do that or is a clockmaker, you, sir, are a hero and or you, ma'am, are a hero and keep on doing it because you're cool. Uh, query selector. We're going to get the hand.hour because it's going to be the hour hand. 
and let's just copy this and we're gonna say minute second and let's rename these sec min so now we're getting all of them let's create a function called tick and what tick is going to do is basically be like the ticking clock so we're going to get the date so we're going to get the current date and then let's set up the seconds so we're going to say here seconds and what we're going to say is let seconds equal d dot get sec seconds because we're going to get the the current seconds we're then going to say cons seconds as or second degrees what you going to say sec deg sec sec deg because it's sure so this just stands for the seconds in degrees and to do this we've got to do some sort of maths and what we're going to say is seconds divided by 60 because obviously there is 60 seconds in a minute um, and then we're going to say times that by 360 plus 90 so what we're doing here is we're getting the seconds what the current seconds are we're dividing it by 60 because this gives us it in um, I presume the thousands um, and then we're timesing it by 360 so the um, diameter of a circle or the degrees of a circle uh, that makes sense right <laughs> and then we're plusing 90 degrees uh, and that is how we're doing our calculations um, it's hard to explain that, but that makes sense. <laughs> Handsec dot star. Just, just think of this as the formula to get the degrees from seconds. So we're going to get the hand seconds dot style dot transform. And we're going to set equal to translate y minus 50 percent. We need to keep that. Then we're going to say rotate. And we're going to say dollar this because we're going to start adding in um our our code here and we're going to say second or sec we call it sec deg which are seconds and degrees and then right after we're going to write degrees and now all we need to do is make this tick so down here if we say tick we hit save you'll see that has now changed over here if we quickly refresh the page it should be somewhere over here there you go so it's now moving as we think but we need to basically create a set interval so and we'll call tick every 1000 seconds so now if we save you'll see the clock is now ticking away which is perfect so we've got the one hand ticking like a normal clock the second hand now we need to do the minute which is going to be minute so we're going to say let minute equal so i need to breathe uh, we're going to say minutes because plural and we're going to say d dot get minutes again so we're getting the current minutes of the clock we're then going to say const uh min deg and now this one is slightly more complex so they get compl more complex as we go along and um, so this one we're going to say minutes divided by 60 times by 360 like we did before plus um so this i'm going to say plus wait if i've done that right no that's wrong what am i doing so that's that we need to do that yep and we're going to say seconds divided by 60 and then we're going to say times by six plus 90 we all need to plus that 90 because it's always an additional 90 degrees on from what it is from from the right angle that is um and now i so basically we're doing the same uh thing as we're doing up here because it's 60 seconds uh 60 minutes in an hour so we're working that out we're times that by 360 which is the diameter of the clock and we're plusing on the second stuff which actually works out to be the minute um, plus nine, and I also need to remove that. There we go. And now we just need to say hand min dot style. Oh, so actually, we could just copy this. So hand min thing, and then we're going to say rotate min deg degrees. 
Okay, so as you can see, so we're back. So I'm the it was either my internet or code pen went down, one of the two. But also I just renamed hand mint to hand sec, or no, from hand sec to hand mint. So now, as you can see, this is now in a different position and the clock is ticking. When this gets to the top, this will flip back around because the I need to fix the spinningness of this. But there you go. So now that would have moved slightly forward by a little bit. But if you weren't watching closely, you wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> so also, let's now get the hour and the hour hand. We're going to say let hour e or hours, whichever one you want. Um, we're going to say equals d dot get hours, and then we're going to say const hour deg is equal to, and then you guessed it. It's one hour. But this time it's divided by 12 because obviously we're doing a 12 hour clock, not a 24 hour because it's not digital. Um, so times 360 plus, and again, this time we're doing the same formula what we did before. So we're going to say minutes divided by 60 times 30 plus 90. And there we go. That is the formula for the hour. And this is hours, not hour. We're then going to say hand hour. I'm going to copy this. And this time we're just going to change hour deg. Hit save. And there you go. It is. So it is 2.41. And as you can see, the hour hand is pointing towards 2, between 2 and 3, because it's getting closer to 3. And also this is at um, where it should be, which is great. It's at um, twenty two. Sorry, twenty two, which is correct. Um, also, this last bit here. If we remove this and we just plus by ninety, and we remove this and just plus by ninety, you'll see what happens to the clock. As you can see. The clock is now perfectly pointing towards 2, and this will be perfectly pointing towards 2.42 because the whole point of the extra additional seconds here and here are to calculate the distance between the 2, so between 3 and 2. So 2 is about here, 3 is here. So you can see it's closer to 3 because of that, and that is what this works out. So if you wanted it to be more accurate, like if it's 2, it always points at 2 exactly. You could just remove this bit here, and if you wanted this to point perfectly at the minute and not at the minute between the seconds, and we hit save, that should now... See, that is now pointing more towards the 2, perfectly towards the 2, and this one is perfectly towards the minute which in my opinion is better with an analog clock without any numbers because you have no idea what's going on in these clocks <laughs> but without further ado guys that is what i want to show you today so this simple literally what is it 24 lines of javascript can get you a ticking clock and as a further development i'd love to see if anyone can add numbers going around perfectly to match these aiming at so two would have to be here one would be here obviously 12 would be top three Maybe even if you can get 12, 3, 6, 9 in there. I think that's a good start and that at least gives you some sort of indication. I'm too lazy to do that and it would probably take me quite a while in a in this tutorial. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit the subscribe because we do these sort of videos every single day for this month. So that is good. And thank you for watching. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep